Okay, this first question says, do triangles LMN and triangle LOM meet the side angle side congruence criteria? We already see that we have a set of congruent sides, and it's given that we have a set of congruent angles, so we have a side angle situation right now, and we're looking for a third set of uh, congruent parts being another set of sides. The side that they share, LN in the middle, is congruent to itself. LN is congruent to LN because of the reflexive property. So absolutely yes, we have a congruence criteria of side angle side for these two triangles. Now the second question says, what rigid motion or sequence of rigid motions, which just means more than one or a composite transformation, prove that the two triangles would be congruent? Just like in the last video, which was more comprehensive than this question, if we reflected over the line segment LN and flipped one triangle over that reflection line, it would map one onto the other. So that is a single rigid motion that would prove the two triangles congruent. Reflect over the line segment LN. Now on to the last congruent section here. Again, they're asking us, do these two triangles meet the side angle side criteria? Speaking of this triangle here, and of course the upside down one above it, right there. Do they meet the side angle side criteria? We already have a set of sides, a pair of angles, and again, just like the last problem, we have a reflexive side in the middle there. So yes, because they share a side, they do meet the side angle side congruence criteria. Now the next question is interesting because it says what rigid motion, or again, sequence of rigid motions, prove the two triangles to be congruent? And really, there are multiple ways of doing this. You could perform a sequence of rigid motions, and there's probably a whole host of ways you could spin, reflect, translate, and whatnot to make those triangles congruent, but there is in fact one single rigid motion that you could perform that would map one of those triangles onto the other. If you could imagine for a moment and identify the midpoint of GI, we can call that M, if we were to rotate one of the triangles 180 degrees about that midpoint of GI, it would map one of the triangles onto the other in one single rigid motion, thus proving congruence.